Hey there, it's Luke again, and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to use the Moo IDE to program M5 Stack devices. You may have noticed, though, that it's only possible to program the M5 Stack and the original M5 Stick in the Moo IDE. It seems to be an issue where it's not detecting the serial port here. Perhaps because the Stick C and Atom devices have a different serial port name. So what can we do then? I wanted to show you an IDE which shares a lot of the great features that Moo does. That IDE is Tony. We sent some M5 stack devices to the developers quite some time ago and I'd almost forgotten about it. But we're going to have a quick overview of it and how to program M5 stack devices in it in this video today. First we can start by going to tony.org and downloading it. Sadly, it's only available for Windows and Mac, no Linux. Although it comes standard with the Raspberry Pi operating system Raspbian. I've not tested programming these devices on a Raspberry Pi yet though. First we'll try to program the Stick C with a standard UI Flow firmware version 1.4.5. We'll need to make sure it's in USB mode, which can be done by pressing the reset button and then pressing the M5 button just a moment later. Then we can use the button on the right hand side to cycle through to the settings menu. Press the M5 button again and finally press the right hand side button once to go down to USB mode. Press M5 button again to enter USB mode. Once you've installed Tony and opened it, it looks something like this. On the left hand side we have the file browser, on the right hand side we have a big window to create our Python scripts, and below that is the REPL. If you're not familiar with the REPL, it stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop, and I've done various videos on it in the past, which you can go check out if you want to know more. To establish a serial connection with the M5 stack device, we need to click on the Run menu and choose Select Interpreter. Here you need to click on the drop down list and select MicroPython ESP32 from the list. Then we can select the port from the ports list. The Tony IDE actually recognizes that it's an M5 stack device. Once you've done that you can click OK. It'll display a message saying the device is busy. All you need to do though is press Ctrl and C a couple of times until we see three right-facing arrows which mean that we have entered the prompt. Now we can start to type commands. You'll also notice in the top left hand corner that now we can explore the flash partition of the M5 stack device. You can see all of the Python scripts on the device and even navigate into the folders something which is not available in a lot of other IDEs. Sadly though if we try to download any of the files we can see that it throws up an error. I'm not quite sure why this is, but hopefully it'll be fixed in a newer version. Now let's do a quick test to see if the REPL is working. It's still connected and we can see the flash contents with the OS module. Now let's import some of the M5 stack libraries. I'll change the screen color with the set screen color function. And then create a label. Users of UI Flow should be quite familiar with this command. And there we have it. Now let's start to write some Python scripts and see if we can run them on the device. I'll quickly type out the same test program that we just used. Then once we're done we hit the play button or press F5. It should run directly on the device after saving. This is a great feature and makes it so quick to test your Python programs on the device. We have the option to save the program to the device or to your computer. We can easily upload Python scripts from our computer. I'll test this business card script which I made a while ago. Again press the run button or press F5. And we can see it instantly runs on the device. You can also do the same with MicroPython scripts on the flash of the device. Now let's take a quick look at how we can program the M5 Atom in Tony. We also need to make sure that the M5 Atom is in USB mode. 
This is easily done by pressing the reset button, holding in the screen button until the LED matrix flashes blue. We'll need to make sure that we select the port from the Select Interpreter menu again. Sometimes Tony will auto-detect and go straight into the REPL. As mentioned before, we can hit Ctrl C a few times to kill the processes running on the device and get into the command prompt. Let's try a simple program to control the LED matrix. I copied and pasted this from the UI Flow editor. If you ever get stuck on any of the UI Flow functions, you can always switch over from the blocks to the Python on UI Flow to see the equivalent Python command and then just paste it over here. Alternatively, you can look at the UI Flow documentation. Link posted in the description. Let's press run again to run the script. Now that's it covered for M5 stack devices that have UI Flow firmware on them. But what about using devices with pure MicroPython flash to them? Tony actually has a nice function where we can directly flash firmware files. So let's first go to the micropython.org website and download the latest MicroPython firmware for ESP32 devices. Once it's downloaded, open up Tony again, go to the Run menu and select Interpreter again, but this time click on the Open the dialog for installing or upgrading MicroPython on your device button. Here we can first select the port and then we can browse for the firmware file that we just downloaded. Note that there isn't any option to select the board rate. Perhaps auto selects the correct board rate. Once you click install, you'll see the MicroPython firmware being flashed. Once we're done, click OK, select the port again, and now we can see that we only have one file on the MicroPython flash system. Of course, we're going to need some necessary modules for controlling the screen and the other hardware of the M5 Stick C. I've made this GitHub repository, which I'll link to in the description, which contains a bunch of necessary modules that have been created by various members of the community. Make sure to download this zip and extract it. Once extracted, we'll need to upload the files one by one. You can do this by right-clicking the file and choosing Upload To. Once we have all of the modules uploaded, let's see if we can display something on the M5 Stick C screen with this sample code. And there we have it. This is a great step forward for programming the M5 Stick C independently of UI Flow. Let's see what other cool features these user created modules have implemented. If we import the Wi Fi Manager script, it creates a Wi Fi access point which we can then connect to and configure the Wi Fi settings of the M5 Stick C device, similar to how you would do so in the UI Flow firmware. The app script gives a nice printout of the details of the internal battery. I won't go through all of these scripts, so I've left some links in the description which lead to more information of how you can implement the other hardware features of the M5 Stick C. As for the M5 Atom, it's pretty straightforward since the NeoPixel library works fine to control the LED matrix. I previously made a video on how to program the M5 Atom in standard MicroPython version 1.12. You can go ahead and check that out. That's about all for the video this week. Hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you like, and even continue this discussion over in the M5 Stack forums. And I'll see you over there. Goodbye for now.